Welcome to the Whatever Show. I'm Dragon Pat. I'm Alex Drake. And today we are in a Doctor Who motif. We're going to do four episodes all about the Doctor. And for those of you who haven't seen the Doctor, I don't know what to tell you. If you're hiding under rocks, stop. Just stop hiding under the rocks. You're not fun. I mean, granted, that might be his catchphrase. Because he seems to tell everybody to start to get out from under the rocks. I just think you're obviously brain dead and need help. Because the doctor is, as you heard from us yesterday, or last time, or one of the times before this, depending on when you've watched, come on, Doctor Who is the greatest television show of all times. Yeah. And since it is... And the longest running. Yes, it is. Well, one of the longest running. There's some soap operas and crap like that that's lasted longer, but... Eh, we don't count that shit. Yeah, because it's not sci-fi. Because it doesn't matter. Yeah. When you got the doctor, you don't need that shit. But since he brought up his favorite, one of his uh, catchphrases, we're going to do some of our top ten, and this is in no particular order, catchphrases from Doctor Who. Yes. The first one is, of course, it's all timey-wimey, spacey wacy. This was originally coined by the 11th Doctor, Matt Smith. Mm-hmm. Who started talking about how trying to make sense of the fact that sometimes you do things tomorrow that were done in the past. Because mm-hmm. it's all timey, wimey, spacey, wacy. Next one, it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Eccleston. Uh, number, Doctor Number Nine, everything was fantastic. fantastic. Then he you have. Had, every time he said it, he did it with that weird smile he had. Yes. It's a catchphrase, and he used it well. Mm-hmm. Your next catchphrase you get comes from the Tenth Doctor, and that is Allons-y, meaning let's go. Not to be outdone, Matt Smith brought up Geronimo. And then you get some of these other ones have been around inside all the shows. Mm-hmm. You have Doctor Who. And they usually respond, nothing said it better than Matt Smith whenever he turned to Clara Osborne and said, say that again. I always mm-hmm. love it when people do that. Mm-hmm. Because as we heard from the fourth doctor, he's the definitive article. Mm-hmm. He's not a doctor, but the yeah. doctor. And the first one also said it. Well, no, he didn't say he was the definitive article. He said he's not a doctor, the doctor, mm-hmm. which is a separate catchphrase. And they all seem to use that one because it's not a doctor. They are the doctor. Your next big phrase that they come up with and they use is the TARDIS. Mm -hmm. T-A-R-D-I-S. For time and relative dimension in space. The phrase was originally coined by the very first companion to the doctor, who supposedly was his granddaughter. And she said that's what she calls it, and that's what it is. And the TARDIS, although it is represents the time machine that he flies around in, we've actually got to meet her. And yes, the Doctor does have a love affair going on with his TARDIS. It's a very special relationship. They love each other dearly. Because the TARDIS has broken the rules of science fiction everywhere to keep him alive. Mm. And this brings us to the next recurring line. Is this bigger on the inside? Mm -hmm. Or, when Capaldi got the opportunity to pretend to be not the Doctor. It's smaller on the outside than the inside. Because what they're talking about is the fact that inside the TARDIS, I mean, this this thing looks like a police box. Quite literally, dimensions in space. It's its own dimension, floating around in space. And that dimension even has a swimming pool. In a yep. library. And not one closet full of clothes, but multiple levels. Yes. And if you haven't seen the closets of clothes, those are neat. They have all the clothes. We in get the to universe. see them several times. It's first alluded to under the fourth doctor, whenever he kept going back into the TARDIS to change clothes. 
before he could pick something that would fit in. Mm -hmm. And he went from looking like a Viking mm -hmm. to, to, a clown. to a clown, to a royal king. Mm -hmm. And then we got the doctor. Yeah. And not to, be let, not to be outdone, some of the companions have done the same thing. Mm -hmm. Romana, too. Yeah. When she went in to change clothes, she came out several times in different outfits before she even came out in one that was an exact duplicate of the fourth doctor's outfit. And he's like, oh, I like that one. <laughs> but of course he would. Now another phrase that says, the, granted, we've already given you ten, but we're going to give you another one just because we like bonuses. And your bonus one, oh, you redecorated. I don't like it. Every time one doctor gets to see inside the TARDIS of another doctor. They don't like it. Oh, you redecorated. I don't, like I, I don't it. care for it. Because in each of their minds, the way they had their set up was the best. Now, the doctor is, of course, a fictional character. If it wasn't, then I would definitely be staking out Cardiff. Because when that ship gets refilled, I intend to hop a, hop a ride. Yeah, I'd pull. But this is giving you your first little taste of the whatever view of the doctor. Now, we're going to give you more of a taste as we proceed. But those are different episodes, and you'll be catching them next. So... From here, I want to tell you it's been fantastic to spend time with you all. Mm -hmm. And we'll see you next time. Or was that yesterday? Who knows? Y'all have a good night. Mm -hmm.